The Dark Tower by Stephen King. For some people, <laughs> those words, they, they mean so much. And for some, they mean nothing. And for those of you that uh, they mean nothing, probably you'll lose some context in what's coming. But overall, I'll try not to do some spoilers that would ruin the book for you. But oh man, do I have strong opinions about that one. So the idea was this. I started reading it quite a while ago, and the whole Dark Tower series is about eight books, seven in a canon, I think, and one kind of out of canon, maybe one and a half, uh, something like that. Then I started a few years ago. I tried to push through it, and it was pretty much, uh, let's say, interesting. Uh, I, it was easily digestible, I would think. But uh, compared to other Stephen King books that I tried earlier, this one was definitely better because uh, I have a thing with books. Some of them have this really weird pacing, you know, it's like a style and a pace where things develop and the narration itself has an internal rhythm. And for some of the situations, I just cannot do it. For example, the... Uh, Master and Margarita. I could not read it. Stephen King. Stephen King. I could not read. Uh, there were some other examples, but that's pretty much it. the important ones for the moment. And the Dark Tower was very different from other Stephen King books. So I started reading it, and I read it, and I read it, and after about three and a half books, I just gave up because well, how much can you really do uh, <laughs> reading of the same kind? Then I returned to it. Uh, after about two years break and uh, surprisingly enough I discovered The Wolves of Kalia and The Wolves of Kalia is the very best book of the whole series it was amazing you get to meet Andy and all of the uh, women that are very very capable and you see, get to see Roland from a whole other perspective that you did not expect to have previously Oh, it was amazing. However, when that book ended, we get to another part and then it started rolling down a little bit because in terms of what was promised and the payoffs, you know, you meet all of those characters from other books or when you get to see uh, how the collectors are behaving and what kind of interaction is going on over there in for the... Um, main character in the book <laughs> i'm trying to avoid spoiler as much as i can but you the promise is immense i mean imagine to yourself you're reading a lord of the rings and you get those descriptions of sauron and saruman and uruk -hai, and then there's just meh we just come sweep soup in with a sword and uh, let's not talk about this too much we win that's all so, uh, the, the, it's just, you know, the whole premise is so undeniably huge in the book, right? But then I got to the end, and the end was something else. Well, uh, to give credit, uh, you are kind, kind of being warned about the credit, but I don't understand, because, uh, well, the book was written over 30-something years, Okay. And he clearly had some kind of an idea in his mind, Stephen King, right? And this idea came to fruition. I understand he's a busy man. He writes other books. But uh, when you finish the last book, and you cannot really, you know, there is like this warning at the end of it, uh, but you just push through to, to see the next, uh, what's next, really. Then you understand, like, wh where's, where, what? I did. What, what did I do? What? 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 That's that's the only question that I have. No, no satisfaction, really. I like a journey because the journey has a clear destination. But what if journey doesn't have a clear destination? What if you don't understand? It's like, whoa, why? And then there are all of the closed or open questions that are arising just because the ending was done the way it was. Because when you see something that ends, your immediate uh, response is like, oh, well, I had all of those suspicions, I have all of those uh, things uh, in my mind, and now some of them I get to imagine myself, and some of them I get to uh, get answered by the author. Fantastic. 
It's all great. But what if it's just not there? You know, you know, do you remember this chapter with Sheldon not being able to not complete things? And they, Amy was trying to teach him not to complete things, like uh, you know, cutting, uh, up, cutting everything at the very last bit so everything would be unfinished. And then he was not really happy about that. Well, th that's the feeling that it creates. It's just like intentional. It looks like a person, looks like the author was super tired. He just, he was tired writing this book. He was tired of the whole idea. He did not know how to finish it. And now when I read the Brandon Sanderson books at the moment, I understand that uh, Stephen King is referred to as the discovery writer. So he has an idea, but he doesn't really outline. He just wanders into whatever he wants to see what uh, what comes out on the other end, which is which might be a fantastic thing. But when you write a book for 30 something years and you repeat the idea and you come back to it all the time, what is it that is at the end of it? What was the at the beginning? I mean, uh, when you set a book uh, to be something and from what I understand in all of the forewords, uh, in every book that the idea came to him very early and he was thinking about it all times. And, uh, well, it's not accidental, whatever is going on over there. He clearly had an idea at the end. There's just, you know, how to finish it. And he didn't. And I just cannot understand what's going on. When you go to Reddit and you try to read the Dark Tower subreddit, everybody are super happy. Everybody are creating the, those tattoos. And uh, yeah, people are really tattooing their own body uh, with, uh, with things that inspire them, which is completely fine. But I don't understand why this book. I just, I cannot understand. I mean, if somebody would ask me to create an essay about this book, which is partially what, what I'm doing right now. I, I, I wouldn't know what to do because all of my opinions about this book are about how I should not have read this book in general. That's like seven books, seven books. Maybe I, but I, I did read, read another one. So it's like eight or is it five? I don't remember. I, I think it might be I, I don't even know that, that too many books and they are written as one more or less. So, yeah, um, that's 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 where I leave you. I know, take it with what it is. Uh, it did make an impact on me. The drawing that you see right now is actually a scene from uh, the book. It does not reveal too much or anything at all. I mean, it, it, it is the Dark Tower and you see the Dark Tower and the Gunslinger is the first two words in the book. So it's not a, you see a Gunslinger and you see the Tower. Uh, and that's not a spoiler at all. However, this scene is very, very significant for those that read the book. Um, this is where, for me, this is where the fun part of the book ended. It's just right there, at the culmination of the promises. It's where everything was promised, nothing resolved, and I was left to imagine, maybe to wonder what's what's next. And uh, yeah, that's the best part of it. Everything else just kind of flipped it all over for me. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed my rumble. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. I promise to be more optimistic <laughs> in the next one.